Okay, let me call this meeting the Rockport Select Board to, well actually it's a workshop. So, uh, call it to order. Um, I'm gonna entertain public comment at this time if our audience would like to comment. <laughs> <laughs> know that I'm an uh, avid supporter of the library and in a particular uh, a certain spot for location. However, that's not exactly why I'm here this morning. I'm here representing a large number of people who can't be here this morning. And believe me, the emails were flying between us about who can, who can't, and so forth because of prior commitments. So it's not me alone standing here. There's a strong feeling that to do a survey at all is not going to yield the information that you think it's going to yield because it's likely to be skewed. The people who will respond are those of us and both sides of the location issue and plenty who are on the cost issue who will respond and plenty working families. This is not high on their agenda and they're not likely to respond to a survey. I don't care how you, how you get the information out there. Uh, I also think that you know already that there are a number of issues that, that are the problem. One is cost. One was the design here. One is the location question. There, those, there's going to be a scattering of those. And if one rises to the top by nine votes, does that mean everything then gets settled on that issue? So I think it's very, um, I think it's incumbent on you to really question whether a survey is what you need at this point, as opposed to a conceptual design on both locations at a size that you think is right by Reed and Company, whom you've worked with for a year, and let people see what they get on each site and then make a decision. Yes, it will delay it. No, you won't have anything on the ballot in June, but that's okay. It's not time to rush this thing. It's a lot of us are gonna be dead before this thing's ever uh, or, or living in Quarry Hill, so we won't even have a vote. So I think it's, but I really think if Rockport wants to look for its future, we really should take the time. It's not fair to just put something up that satisfies a small group or promotes the businesses in a two block section and not think about the future or who you're attracting to come into this community. We can have a dead community or we can have an alive community. And being alive and vibrant means really attracting people who want to be here because of our schools, because of our harbor, because of our location, because of our library and, and institutions of that sort. My last point, and then lucky you, I am not staying to challenge <laughs> every moment. <laughs> My last point is this, I wanna use an analogy. I don't even know you, Emily. I appreciated your comments the other night. I believe you're a consummate professional in that way. So I'm not going to challenge your credentials, but I wanna use an analogy and see what you would feel if this were the situation for you. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist. I've been in practice for 50 years. I feel I'm fairly expert at what I do. I graduated from Duke as an undergraduate and from Cornell University Medical College. My training is pretty solid, let's just put it that way. So let's say that my nephew was Mary Bill to your daughter and they decided to divorce and the judge wants an evaluation of each one to see who gets custody, primary custody of the kids. And I'm willing to do it pro bono I'm an expert, my credentials are good, I'm gonna be the expert that they want, I'm gonna give as unfair an opinion as, I mean as fair an opinion as I possibly can, but is there any way that how I would proceed in some subtle fashion isn't gonna show bias? So I ask you to think like that because I don't think it's fair to have someone who ran for the library committee clearly stating that she wanted one Lime Rock uh, site That's not to be all the archives, all the print, your main support came from the side that supports one Lime Rock. So as I said, I don't even know you, Emily. I have never had any contact with you, socially or otherwise. But I, I want you to see what the trust perception is 
under these circumstances. So those are my two points. Please go slow. Please make it a legitimate selection for the library for what we want for our future. And really question whether a survey is necessary or who's conducting the survey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> May I respond to that, or is that not appropriate at this time? Um, well, uh, let me see if the... Would you like to make a public comment, Our, our other member yeah, of the public... Yeah, let's finish the public comment, okay. and then we can... Uh, it's a process question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is sort of off the cuff from just walking in, but uh, my, my thinking about why this has been delayed already for so many years is because um, there's been no recognition of a couple of different votes in town uh, that supported keeping the library where it is. I mean, it, five years ago, there was a vote for the town not to hold on to RES, but sell the property and get it on the tax rolls. A couple of years after that, there was a vote, a really strong vote, to change the zoning uh, in downtown so that the library <clears throat> could be expanded at one Lime Rock. Uh, there was no attention paid to that. Uh, and then there was the strong vote against RES. And it seems to me now the time is not to design more libraries or continue debating about the, el the size of the elephant, but for you guys to make a decision about the location and move on. Thank you. Now, we okay. can, can get into our part of this. Um, as I said at the meeting, I'm not advocating research, I'm a survey, I'm offering my services. If the select board feels that they don't wanna do a survey, that's okay, I can go home. <laughs> um, but secondly, in terms of the analogy that you made, uh, there's a little bit of a difference between a psychological evaluation and a market research study, which is based on um, hard data. And I'm a psych I have a master's in psychology as well, so I know a little bit about evaluation. Uh, but, and that's a qualitative endeavor. But doing a research project, assuming you don't skew the questionnaire like crazy, um, and I would not have 30 years of experience if that was the way I did business. So I just want to respond to that point that there's a little bit of a difference and the analogy is not quite correct. However, I did also offer the services of a young researcher in Portland that I know who's very capable and has no stake in this town. Uh, so if that were, if you feel strongly that you don't want a resident doing it, there is always that option. And lastly, I did run for library committee because I thought it was important to make a decision, <coughs> but I ran for library committee with an open mind and I did not ever say that I had a strong preference for one location or another. Okay, um, I want to clarify one thing is that uh, Ms. Cook uh, mentioned that was about the vote <clears throat> five, six, seven years ago regarding the RES site. It was not a vote to sell the site. It was a vote whether or not to retain the ball fields there indefinitely. Um, it was a badly worded question, but it was a citizen's initiative, so we put it on the ballot as written. Some people have misinterpreted it as since it became a no vote that it was really a vote in favor of selling. That was not the case. It was in favor of not restricting any use on that site to just preserving the ball fields. So. Well, essentially, a no vote meant no action was taken. Right, that's correct. Uh, the, the, the citizens' initiative failed, so no action was yeah. taken. Okay. Um, Can I say one more thing? I, I strongly feel a survey isn't necessary. I do feel that if you decide to do a survey, you should get someone outside this community. I don't think it should be anyone from in the community or anyone we necessarily recommend. Go find someone yourself. Then if it's going to cost you to do that, put that ask Reed and Company what it would cost to do a conceptual design on, on both sites. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think you would find that you're going to have money well spent and you're going to have a lot more trust from the community as a whole, and that's what we're looking for. And I am truly leaving now. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome to stay. Thanks for coming yeah. in, Ames. Thank you, uh, Curtis, Ames. Okay, uh, the first thing that we need to be discussing, I think, is let's, let's explore this again. We've had several days to consider whether or not we want to do a survey or market research. Are we still in that line? So I wasn't here um, for the benefit of the public. This is Brendan. Uh, I wasn't here for the meeting the other day. Um, I, did, uh, I did offer uh, opening you know, remarks to be read, which I think were read. Yeah, uh, the, but the, the file was played. Yeah. First half of that um, is not available for review, so I didn't get a chance to see it. But um, yeah, for the record, I, I don't personally see the merit of the survey. Um, I, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have the ability to, nor am I inclined to obstruct the board from from choosing to make a survey, but I would make the following observation. This board either needs to decide that it is going to decide where the library will be located or that it is not going to make that decision. I, I don't believe you need the results of the survey to decide that. If we are going to make that decision, we owe it to the public to establish a criteria for site selection, which to the best of my knowledge, we have not done. If we're not going to settle the issue, then we should say so. And then we can have a conversation about what not settling the issue looks like. It could be multiple proposals. It could be, uh, it could be a vote, a straight vote just on the site. But the one aspect of this topic that you cannot compromise on is building site. It's inherently antithetical to compromise. You can't meet in the middle. <laughs> Somebody has to choose. Mm -hmm. Who is going to choose? Will it be us or will it not be us? After that, we can graph out a decision tree. We should be able to explain to the people, these are the factors we are going to weigh when we make the decision. We don't even necessarily have to rank them ever, but we certainly don't have to rank them right now. But we should not need the results of a survey to explain to the public how this decision will be made. There's only two mechanisms, really, right, to get something on the ballot. You can have a citizen's initiative, or we can put it there. Mm -hmm. Which are we going to do? Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Can you define antithetical? The two things can't, they, they, they are inherently opposing each other. You can't, you can't solve for both together. Antithetical. The one refutes the if other. If it's a new word for me, I always ask. I think that I did that to Jeff one time, too. Can you define that word? Thank you. Um, I guess my comment would be this board can't make the final decision. The people, the legislative body, has to make the final decision. We can decide what to put before the legislative body to act on as a decision. Agreed. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Which, so we could do that, um, but do we do that in a vacuum of not knowing what might be more likely or less likely to be approved or not, I guess is my, my point in, in doing a survey. And I, I don't advocate a, a great big broad survey, but I would like to know why people voted the way they did on the last question, because I think that would inform us as to how to move forward in making our decision as to what, what to place before the voters. Having that information, I have no problem with this board making a decision about what to put on the ballot and moving forward. But absent that information, I think we end up you know, spinning ourselves in the, in the hamster's wheel. So let me ask mm -hmm. the question a little differently. <clears throat> Do you favor or intend putting multiple proposals on the next ballot? Proposals that include a solution. And I want the public to know, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. What do we intend to do? Well, for me, 
what we would hear from a survey will make, will make that decision for me. If a survey comes out and says, for example, that the, uh, the people who voted no on the last proposal, that 80% of them voted no because of the cost, then that tells me that, okay, we can fix that. So, if it comes back that 80% voted no because of the site, then we have a totally different situation on our hands. I understand. I submit mm -hmm. to you that you do not need that information back before you tell the public, these are the factors that matter to me. And we have not yet done that. I'm not stopping you from obtaining the information. I'm encouraging you to lay out your criteria for selection before you have the data. Back. I would just say, we did a, a portion of that, not, not entirely. Um, but when we stood up the ad hoc library planning committee, we set down some criteria of how they were going to work <laughs> on that site. So we didn't set up our criteria about a site, but portions. When I joined the board. Is that funny? This was closed. All of you told me it was closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was closed. It was off the table, closed, full stop, closed. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what a no vote can do. So if it's not closed, tell everybody why. What criteria did you use to close it before, and why is that no longer valid? We what is the, the criteria I mean, that you're me, using today to open it? For me, we use the criteria of the no vote on the RES site to close it, and the fact that given that, that I had asked many times for anybody who had changed their mind on that, given new information after the vote, which was the engineering report and things like that, and I never heard anything about anybody having changed their mind on the no vote for the RES site. So we moved ahead with a proposal for the one Lime Rock site, based on that information. But now we get a no vote on the one Lime Rock site. So now, to me, that throws the whole thing open into question as to, as to why was that vote no? Was that vote no because, and I, and I know there are at least some people out there, we've heard from some of them, who said, I voted no because I want to go back to the RES site. How many, how big a contingent is that? That's what I really want to know. And, and you know, as far as the criteria are concerned, when we had the steering committee, they, they did do exactly what you're saying. They listed a bunch of criteria for the site. Ease of construction use, uh, size of the site, expansion possibilities. There was a very objective situation that went through that whole site, and that pointed strongly to the RES site. What doesn't get included in that, and what we have to consider, is the emotions. Because the emotions are going to are are a big part of what's going to drive people as to how they vote. May not be as black and white as we would like it, but it's reality. So, so here's what I would observe. <clears throat> it looks like you're looking for cover. <laughs> when you are waiting for and and openly hoping for <sighs> an eighty percent are going to come back and say I voted no for this reason. I'm not necessarily hoping for that, but I'd like to know. May I? Yeah. Speak. I don't know what my role is here. <laughs> I'm not you guys. I'm, I don't know. Um, I think that there's a, an inherent problem in asking people why they voted no, or why they voted yes, because there's a there's going to be multiple reasons. Understood. There are people who said, you know, I voted yes because I'm sick and tired of the whole thing and I want it resolved and just build the building and leave me alone. That's not going to help you. So I think if we were to do research, it's important to ask people what they want, not why they voted a certain way on a specific proposal that's very complex. For example, one of your list and your very good list of all the reasons, people, some people voted yes because they took the select board recommendation. Well, if that's your answer, it's not going to help, except it's going to empower you guys. It's, and it's... I also am going to say that given the strength of the, of the emotion in a certain group of people in town uh, for the RES site, that, and we've just heard, that group is not going to take the results of a survey as the final answer. And as I said on last week, I said there's no point in doing research <coughs> if everybody doesn't buy into it. And it's very clear that a lot of people are not gonna buy into it. And that won't hurt my feelings personally. That's happened 257,000 times in my career. Oh, I think I have the research here in the bottom drawer. Um, but if people are not gonna buy into it, you're not gonna, 
It's not going to give you whatever you want to call cover or whatever you want to call answers. It's to me, and it's just one person's opinion. If the issue is the loc the site, as Brendan says, we can't we can't sort of fudge that. It's got to be here. Or it's got to be there, unless we take the guy's proposal to buy the medical building. Um, I think what you should put on the ballot in June is, do you want it on the RES or do you want it at Lime Rock? Period. And live with, and then go, then design a building and all this other kind of stuff. Well, I, That's my yeah. personal opinion. And yeah. I, I have a little bit of an issue with putting that question on. You, you sort of alluded to the reason earlier when you said there's a, a fairly good sized group that wanted it at RES. Yep. There's, also a fairly good sized group that wanted it one lime rock. Yep. And this could be one of those where either side, whichever side comes out ahead, thinks that they want everything, the, pre, the group that comes out behind isn't going to buy into that answer. No, I mean, they can still keep coming back. So, you know, that's what, that's the, the, but they can, the jeopardy that I see in this. You have more clout, shall we say, mm -hmm. to say we're going to go with the vote. Mm -hmm. than to say we're going to go with the survey done by a resident who we don't believe. So the, uh, <laughs> I just want to observe that, uh, that that is a perfectly valid way of proceeding. However, I think to proceed in that manner <coughs> is tantamount to saying <coughs> we are going to cite the library according to majority preference. Yep. I haven't heard this body say that is what you intend to do. In fact, I think I've heard you allude to the fact that you want to retain control, and to factor in other factors. Which brings me back to lay out your criteria. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to sideline my own argument because I feel like this discussion is wasting Emily's time. Oh, I believe I the three of you will outvote me because the three of, I think the three of you support a survey of some kind. I don't. That's fine. So let's skip to the end and talk about using this person's expertise about how to construct that survey and or, as she may have already pointed out, whether or not her bias is real. Does the perception of bias eliminate the wisdom of using her as a part of this process? See, that's where now, based on what you, you mentioned here and you know, our discussion is where I'm kind of conflicted. <laughs> you know, well, going in, I was thinking that we would ask that question. Mm -hmm. Where do you want the site? Oh, sure. And, you know, in the survey. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, well, maybe we shouldn't be asking something like that, but asking <coughs> what they want in a oh. library, which becomes much more in, open to interpretation. And that's where people can start drawing <coughs> Different the, conclusions. The, the conclusion that it's biased. Well, the word said this, but I really think that what they meant was this, as opposed to the way you interpret it is that. And well, let you me, know, how do we ensure that that isn't a factor in there? Let me clarify. I didn't mean ask them what they want. Write us an essay about what you want. It would be looking at mm -hmm. which site do you prefer? How strong is your preference for that site? Mm -hmm. How big? How much money do you want to spend? those sorts of very specific questions okay but that's that's of the logical mm -hmm. <laughs> but i'm talking about if we already have going in a, a sense that i'm not going to believe whatever that woman says in the survey and it's not not personal i don't you know <laughs> it's brendan i don't care emily and i don't know each other but this <laughs> part is obvious i mean if and i you know i've seen this happen Repeatedly, if there is not buy-in to the process of the survey, then you're wasting a lot more of my time <laughs> than you're going to waste this morning. Oh, I think and you're going to waste money, a minimal amount. But, and I think even if you use the person I recommended, it's going to be tainted again because I recommended him. If you want to send out RFPs, to six market research companies in Maine and Massachusetts, trust me on one thing, you'll spend a lot more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if we were to use Emily, 
Um, I think it would have to be a different sort of arrangement than she's probably used to. Uh, because I think we couldn't say, okay, Emily, thank you very much for your generous offer to provide market research, now go and do it. No. It would have to be Emily working with us. It would have to be an extremely transparent process in the construction of, the, of whatever questions we ask, yeah. how we ask them, and, and in the interpretation of the results in order that the public could buy into it. Um, and, and that and would be my intention. I would spend a lot more time working with you guys than I usually do with a yeah. client. Um, and that's what <laughs> I came prepared. Yeah, it would, it would have to be, like I say, the whole thing would have to be terribly transparent. And the questions would have to be, quite honestly, very objective mm -hmm. um, uh, to make it work. And, and I've said all along that I, I think, you know, the briefer that any survey can be, the better. Uh, I'm really not interested in going back out and asking people what do you want in your library and what we've done all that. We've had yep. the focus groups, we've had the meetings, you participated in that yep. what seems like eons ago now. <clears throat> um, so I'm not interested in that. I'm really interested in trying to flesh out how the divisions are. We hear from the same 50 to 70 people at every meeting <clears throat> and we hear the passions of those people. And to my observation, it looks like it's split about 50-50 from what we hear at the meetings. I don't, and, and, and the, obviously the last vote was split 50-50. So I don't know how the, the great masses feel, how the, how the people that we don't hear from, how do they feel? And, you know, I agree, we have to, we have to make a decision. And, and if this board decides not to do a survey, then I'm okay with, with forging forward and making our decision, making people mad at us, which we will do. <laughs> There's no way around that. But what I'm, I'm less, ha what I'd be less happy about is the potential of success in doing that. Is that if we don't have a better sense of where the electorate lies on this issue, because ultimately they have to make the decision. We can't make the final decision. We don't have the power to do that. Uh, agreed. And, and so I w again, I want to be clear to the people mm -hmm. at Rockport. It's not that I don't care what you care about. <clears throat> it's that I don't care whether it's. 55, 45, 60, 40, 70, 30, I don't care. I believe we are meaningfully divided on this one topic and that we will come together after that topic is settled. That, that's, I, so we have to decide, are we gonna settle it or are we not? So it, if, it was, if it was 51, 49, that holds as much weight as if it was 70, 30 for you and an opinion on where to have the site? You have to believe that you're going to be able to sample this information and receive this information in a way that is objective and not subject to interpretation. Mm -hmm. I say, you're not gonna do it. I don't know what I'm doing, this person does, but <laughs> I don't support us telling the expert what questions to ask. <laughs> what is that for? <laughs> We're saying, we, we, this really is like a catch-22, right? We, you brought in an expert mm. who knows how to ask these questions. For right or for wrong, people in our community have laid a claim of bias. We're saying the only way to circumvent that claim of bias is for us to tell the expert which questions she's supposed to ask. I, don't, I, don't, I, think, you know, I think the expert informs us yeah. as, to, as to how to ask the questions. And if we look at something and we say, you know what, I don't like the way that's worded. I mean, the expert, if we suggest the question to the expert and she thinks it's a stupid question, she'll tell us. I don't have any doubt about that. Well, I think she just did, right? You um, gave her... I think yeah, I gave her one one this. possible way. Yeah. Well, no, he wasn't thinking of he wasn't thinking of those as being actual questions. I don't think it was not necessarily. That was just a was, first shot at it from was, a non-expert. So, so talk me through how we go from where we are to asking questions that the community is going to totally buy into. This is no how way. I see it is if we were to go that route, and I'm I'm not the biggest fan of it, but. It is what it is. If, if we decide to go the market research survey route, I would see it as all public meetings, all open meetings, where we are simply using Emily as a sounding board for are we going through the process properly or not. But virtually everything is generated by the select board, only given to Emily as a, it, would this get us the information that we're looking for? Because of the perception that you are biased, I think that we would utilize Emily in a, is this a good approach or not, versus this was generated by Emily, and then we looked over it and then and tweaked it. That's another route that we can do. But I think uh, having people understand 
that virtually everything that they would read is generated by the select board brings a little bit of that bias so away from... So I encourage from... you now to sideline my opinion <laughs> and proceed. Well, uh, you know, like take the vote if we want to. Yes, we're going to do that. Y- you opened up the conversation. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do this? You've heard how I feel about it. I think, like, can we just go down the line and, and skip to the end? Yes, there's going to be a survey. Well, let, let's ask ourselves a question. How soon do we want to present something back? You know, at what speed do we want to progress here? You know, are we aiming at June or are we aiming at sometime in the future after we have been able to explore and discuss and hash around and slice and dice? I'm not and all aiming of for that? June anymore. <clears throat> okay. I I uh, was mentally at a different place at the last meeting and wanted to go in an expedited fashion. Um, I'm realizing that maybe even though that's my preferred speed, that maybe isn't the best speed to get us the best result. I know that's not going to make everyone happy, but I think that shooting for November, shooting for June as as maybe a potential to to have there be a two competing sites and then November for a final project, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm not, I'm not shooting for definitively moving forward, no questions asked, money's allocated, buildings designed, location is set in June. I'm not shooting for that anymore. I think it's too quick. I'd love to have it be done in June, settled, over, but I just don't think it's reality. Well, look, I, I want to explore that a little bit because you sort of back, went back and touched on the idea of having competing designs. We would then have to set some kind of limits. How much would the result, if the build, if the design were to be taken all the way to a building, how much would be the cost of that? What would be the size of that? Um, you know, so that you know, we've we've going to have to place some limits then, as opposed to placing the limit on the site and letting that determine the cost and size. If I could tease out that thought, so. One of the things that's tough is when you start throwing in the multiple factors and then something goes awry, you don't know which factor was the heaviest weight. You don't know which factor was the deciding one for people. Um, So having a designed image for people to look at, one at RES, one at one Lime Rock, you may not know at the end of it, oh, so did they pick this one because they they like the design more than the location or vice versa with that one? So I think that... A potential route, um, just for discussion purposes, uh, is a competing RES, one Lime Rock in June vote, not with an image, not with a picture or a site design, um, but just the locations going head to head. And then the winner in November has a vetted out, costed out design. If it's if it settles that it's one lime rock, then we've got a really simple road ahead of us. We take what we did and scale it back a little bit because obviously if one lime rock wins, then it was primarily financial costs that or aesthetics that people didn't like about it. So we can move forward on that. But that's just a thought. And if RES wins, then you put up a design for a one story on, on RES and you put that to the voters in November and, and see what happens. Devil's advocate. Yep, hit me. <clears throat> we put a question on in June with two choices, one Lime Rock and RES. We'll get a result for that. And, and, and on the extremely rare case that it's actually a strictly tied vote, but other than, if that case doesn't occur, then we get an answer one way or the other on the site. But what we haven't done in that question is allow the people who don't want a new library of any size in Rockport to have a say. And so what could end up happening is that we get, let's say we get a narrow win for one site, I'm not even gonna say which site. We then proceed on that basis with a cost, what we think is a responsible cost design for a new library, put it on in November, (coughs) and it goes down. Why did it go down? Because there's a certain percentage of people in the town who don't want to spend any money on it. Well, then you put on four or five choices. One Lime Rock, RES, neither, other, none. Multiple choice yeah, questions that are one never well, good. Competing but, head to head, I can That's what you're going to have anyway if you say, you know, vote for one, Lime Rock or RES. Can I, yeah, I, it's a, can it's, I just point out that 
there is a group of people who doesn't want us to spend money mm -hmm. on a library. Mm -hmm. That's right. This select board has still not stood up and said, thank you for your input. We heard you. We really heard you. We disagree and we are proceeding toward a library anyway. We haven't said that. Mm -hmm. I think each of us means that. <clears throat> but it's important to say. Thank you uh, for the people that don't want a library at all. I think that we're moving forward on that. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> uh, I value your input, people on the other side of the camera, but I believe that this community wants a library of some size, the size yet to be determined. Thank you. I'm moving forward on it. Owen has just help. completely synthesized my own personal opinion as well. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds good. Same here. Well, but yeah. my point in all of this is that if you offer a choice that some voter thinks, I said, well, my choice mm -hmm. isn't there, mm -hmm. and I can't mm -hmm. support either one, but then they're, they're, those voters are going to come back in the final product, and they are going to be <clears> factored <throat> in because they can vote up or down on, on bonding or budget or whatever. Um, and so I guess that's what's, again, I, I, if the rest of the board doesn't want to do a survey, then, then, then I can get outvoted on that. But, but I, I think that it, our responsibility is to put a responsible proposal for, before the voters. I think we did that this last time around. It didn't pass. And so the voters told us, no, we didn't like that proposal for whatever reason. And the whatever reason is the big thing for me. Um, if we can determine what that whatever reason is, I think that informs us better as we move forward to, to put the next proposal before the and, voters. And I would just sort of continuing that trend and what we've already said, that the vote went down, and we don't know exactly why. But what we have heard that there is a, there's a group that strongly is advocating for RES, and there is a group that is strongly advocating for one Lime Rock. We really don't know the size of those groups, but those may, that may not be the issue that we have to address. It may be if we reduce the cost, and I'm not going to pick out a number, but you know, we bring it down, we bring down the size. Because we have heard from a lot of people who not only said, I want it here or I want it here, but I also don't want the cost here. You know, it cost too much, it was too big, it was ugly. There's, I don't think we're gonna do anything about the ugly because ugly is, is a perception, it's a state of mind. But size and cost can be addressed. And if we reduce the cost, reduce the size, leave it at one rhyme, lime rock or move it over there and ask that question, Guys, we, we, we have, may be able to get somewhere. We have two things we need to do while mm -hmm. Emily is here with us. Yeah. Are we going to use her services? And if we want to use her services in the current climate, I guess three things. In the current climate, is she willing to participate <laughs> in this? And then how are we going to eliminate this perception of bias? I didn't. I only got two, two emails from folks talking about biased on Emily's uh, part. You had said that you had, had one you had person. <coughs> I, I'd have to go through to see how many. And I they got. weren't that very. The point for you? They weren't I mean, very vitriolic. No, it no. was it was like stating the obvious that yeah. you know, yep. but it wasn't any sort of attacking on Emily. You go like, ahead and attack me. I'm too old to care. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would ask Emily, how do you feel about it? Well, I don't like to go into doing a survey when there's already concerns about either my bias or concerns about being willing to accept the results. Because it wasn't just bias. The other thing Ames mentioned was, oh, the, everybody isn't going to answer the survey, and we'll just hear from the same people again, and which might be true. Um, and I think it's not so much whether I'm willing, it's whether there's any point in in doing this, if we have a pretty good idea that people are going to come up with some reason why it wasn't valid. And whether I do it or whether we have Bruce in Portland do it or whether you put out an RFP and have somebody do it, there's a, there is a bias, to use the same word, against believing the results of a survey. There is, in fact, a bias against believing the results of the votes. Mm -hmm. The town has voted on the RES site. They've also voted not to build a new library. 
And if you want to say, you said you don't want a library, but we want to build a library, fine. But then the next step is if you say, you voted against the RES, almost two to one, but we're going to go and consider the RES again, your credibility doesn't look so good either. <laughs> so, not to insult you or anything, but I've been <laughs> insulted twice already today, so I can do that. <laughs> um, well, I mean, the reality is the RES site has been voted down. The one Lime Rock site has been voted down. Well, the, the, the two votes were slightly different, but yeah, yes. To a certain extent, but, but, but some people will interpret it that <laughs> yes. way. Yes. So the point is, if you're not going to believe a vote, then they're certainly not going to believe a survey. And I would hate to see us all spend our time and a small, granted a small or even a large amount of money on a survey that's going to go in the bottom drawer and they're going to build the condos anyway. I told you that story. <laughs> so Brendan missed that. You'd get a kick out of this. Did a guy builder wanted me to, years ago, do a survey about whether he should build a set of condos at a certain location, at a certain price point, certain amenities, all that kind of stuff. Did the research, came back and said, nope, there isn't the market for it. He built them anyway. Two years later, he called, and they weren't selling. He called me, he says, they aren't selling. Can you do a survey and find out why? I said, go to the bottom drawer, get that report out, and read it. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend your time, my time, money, effort, when we have a hint already that, that there's a group of people in town who are going to say, I don't care what the survey says. Mm -hmm. That's, it's not going to help. Seriously. And I want to help, but not yeah. at that price. Question. Here's my two, just a, just a thought. So one on, on Ken's uh, devil's advocate, which I appreciate. Um, and it's, it made me think of a chess game and you were thinking many moves ahead, which is the right way to do it, but you can't, you can't get to figure reassessing checkmate until you've made that first move and you've put your knight in pawn queen four thingy. So <clears throat> this is just this is where my mind's at, and I, and I'm willing to have a discussion about it. I could take or leave the survey. I would love to to spend more time with you, Emily. I enjoy my time with you, um, <laughs> but I could take or leave the survey. I think that what would not be a bad approach forward is skipping a survey simply because of the, the bias, the perceived bias, the et cetera, et cetera. Having two competing ballot measures, RES site, one Lime Rock site in June, then that gives us from June until November to come up with a design for the site that was picked. A side wins, a side loses. I apologize if it was by nine votes, but one side, yes, yeah, sometimes majority just does rule. And it is advocating a little bit of our responsibility. I, I, don't dis yeah. I, I don't disagree. If this board decides to let majority rule, mm -hmm. that is a defensible position. I just don't think you've said that. Well, and I think that what's, what's difficult for me anyway in, in hearing some of the things that you say is mm -hmm. there were times under which we as a board definitively said things. And it was in an environment and a climate that is different than where we are today. And one of the things that I try to do when I sit up here is live in the here and in the now. And so you all haven't done this and that. Well, at certain points in time, we have. Ken we have, actually answered we the have question, made right? decisions. He said, my criteria, I think he was only speaking for himself. He said, my criteria for restricting selection on the site to one Lime Rock was a no vote on the RES. Do I have that correct? Is that is that what you said? That was your criteria at the time? At, at the time, that was that happened, yes. So at the time. What I was and hoping that's... for was what was the board's criteria, because Ken is one member of the board. I mean, I, this is not, I'm not trying to shape an yeah. argument here. I'm, yeah. I'm really just asking well, a question. One of the that things that, that was <clears throat> mine as well, that the RES vote was no. It was clearly that people didn't want to, have a new library at primarily at the one Lime Rock or the RES site. And mine was amalgamation of because I wasn't on the board when that vote happened. Um, but mine was yes that the RES site that I voted for at that point in time because I was lacking a lot of information um, that that had failed. And then it was that information that I was lacking when I when I became aware of that sitting on this board and having to do my homework more more thoroughly. 
it led me to believe that, okay, one Lime Rock is a perfectly acceptable site and I don't want to lose uh, Veterans Park because of the Mary Bach deed because we haven't figured it out. So mine was not a one simple thing. It was an assessment, a big, broad assessment. Let me ask you this, Owen, about your proposal to put on one Lime Rock and RAS in June. Yep. Would you put one question on saying, do you favor one Lime Rock or RES, yes. or would you put two questions on saying, do you want to build a new library at RES, yes or no, or do you want to build a new library at one Lime Rock, yes or no? And I thought about that because what if you did, what if there was someone who was like, hey, I'm just going to vote yes on both or no on both? You well, could, people, the people no on both no people, on both. they that's, could then that, my point, those could that, be the people that don't want a library at all. That's right, that doesn't yep. disenfranchise those voters. And the potential to get a skewed, non, non-interpretable vote result from that is very small it's very it's a small percentage that somehow people would vote yes on both uh, yeah, to, a, to really skew unlikely. it and then both of them win that's a i think that that's a, a low probability your, and both of your end goal is to eventually end up with a bond proposal that passes with a strong majority yes so what you are describing, I think, is a process of just tallying up majority preference on location. Yeah. It's a democracy, man. Numbers win. We propose things, so, and they vote on them. We proposed something, no, I, they voted it I understand it that, but I want to point out the way in which I think what you're proposing now is actually contrary to what I think you guys have described in the past. <laughs> Believe me, I am with you in taking this location question off the table. I think that we have to do that. I want to make sure that we all understand what you are proposing, mm -hmm. which is to take that location question off the table by majority vote. Yes. No other factors will be considered at the time that the... Each individual that votes has their own factors and criteria that they're considering. Except, accepted. All right, I just, I want, what and you are saying is, is clear. At, to me, it seems contradictory to what we have said in the past. In the past, and that's because the environment and climate changes over time. After a no vote, after a change in, so when we did the whole trash issue, I voted in a certain way. Two days later, they extended a timeline that changed the entire outlook for me. So I reversed what I was yeah, saying. I'm not advocating not responding, to, you know, like coming up like this will be my position forever and never responding. That's not, I, I hear you. Yeah. Being intrenchable sometimes I think is, is even worse than being open-minded. Yes, I could be accused so, of being a flip-flopper because so, of... So for my part, I would argue that yes, we have an obligation and a responsibility to take this decision off the table. And we don't do it by straight up majority vote. We do it by establishing a criteria for deciding where the library goes. And the five of us were put here not to tally up majority opinion. Mm -hmm. We were put here to transparently and, in, and you know comprehensively show people our thought process and make decisions that the public can't make for themselves. And which is why I don't care if it's 60, 40, or 70, 30. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the only factor that I think we care about. I guess I'm still confused by the not the not caring if it's if it's a <clears throat> close to 50 50 or a large majority because so if it's a I'll, large I'll throw, majority I'll throw then out an attribute I'll, I'll throw out another aspect that i would like for us to consider that i haven't heard people talk about a lot the level of disruption to the community during construction mm -hmm. right there, mm -hmm. the, there's no way you can say that that is the same on both sides that's right well that was included in, in the criteria that the, the steering committee used steering they used that, that so was i'll apologize again and, and again for the fact that i wasn't paying close enough attention before i joined the board and i'll try and read that read up on that stuff but it's this is an example, Owen, of the ways in which I, I, wouldn't, I would prefer not to just let the people vote on the location because I don't think that's why we were put here. Well, I would agree that we have to, if we're going to do that, and, and... Why do you five care? Like, how, how are you... Like, the first, I would hope, is to say that it is actually our responsibility to make this choice. I believe. Say, say we five. You're part of the team, man. No, no, it's I'm not talking you about five. No, no, I'm it's talking about. Five. I was phrasing that as a member it's of the public. Us. I didn't say you four. I said okay. you five. Like from them, <laughs> letting them know. How do you five, the five of us, 
make a decision on this. We can either sort of abdicate the responsibility, in my opinion, say that we're not going to make this decision. That is a decision. I hope we don't do that, but we can do that. Say we, we're no better than, than the community at large. We're divided. We don't, we don't even value our own decision-making process as objective enough. We're not going to settle this. We, we could do that. If we're not going to do that, well, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say any more. Here's a you quick, settled it once. Here's a quick one. <coughs> and maybe, and I'm just, this is just right off the top of my head. So some of the members of the, this board have been around a lot longer than I have and, and me, than you. Yeah. And there's this wall, and it's called the library. And they've been pounding their head against this <laughs> wall for a while and attempting different ways to break through that wall while pounding their head. And though it may seem like an abdication of responsibility, at some point maybe you go, hey, so we can collectively just dish it off to them and they pound their head through the wall and then we have an answer and we can move forward. So yes, it may seem like the easy way out to give it to the citizens, but my perception is if you've been pounding your head on this wall for a while and then you see an avenue where it's like, so we can decide this and have it be completely off the table because we did that. We made it completely off the table. And then the citizens shot us down again. So at what point do we okay, continue although, to put things that they vote against and shoot down and twitch, switch tactics? I, agree. I see if this you, as a shifting of tactics. If, you don't believe, if, the, if we don't believe that a passable proposal exists, then, then we should just stop. Right? I mean, that's what you're... <laughs> That's what you're saying. No, I stop think for that a we period could, of time. Not stop I think forever. that we could come up with a passable proposal. The, the question is, how many iterations is it going to take before we get to that sweet spot of where everyone's at? The majority, 50 plus one, is that. Because, yes, we can come up with designs and propositions We're not after to go-go. 50 plus one, right? I mean, we, well, in a democracy, you are. Well, all right, so if that's your take... We could, I would love 80 plus We could take seven. a very different strategy than just up or down on this site or that site and say, we just had a vote. How can we manipulatively uh, sideline no votes from those individuals in order to get the next one to pass, if that's what you're after? That's another way of doing it. I, I hope we don't do it that way, but you could do it that I'm way. I'm for sure not trying to sideline groups of people. I'm trying to but, let what appears to be two distinct camps of people. Look, we... we have been trying and failing at interpreting what people want. And so we'll just let the two proposals go head to head. But the decision well, process let's, looks arbitrary. Yeah, let's step back from this just for a moment and, and look at it in a different light. A year ago, well, actually early this year, we had the vote <coughs> on the middle school. Mm -hmm. And it went down to defeat at a fairly sizable it did. proportion. Yeah. They're going to be coming back again because they've already decided they're still going to have a new school and it's going to be on that site and it's going to be called the middle school and it's going to cost well, pretty much the same amount as the last one. Mm -hmm. you know, if that passes this time, and they're saying they're going to put it on the November 2017 ballot, if that passes by one vote, does that mean that they're going to build the school? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, it does. Because, you know, as you point out, that's a democracy. You know, they've been holding these meetings with their focus group. Owen has participated. I may have to resign from that. Yeah, that's, they, they're, they're pretty much through, aren't they, I thought. Yeah, but now it doesn't matter. But they've had a focus group. And they have been meeting, and they have come up with something. They then took the whole board to take a vote. And it's going to the, you know, they're going to finish the design and take it to the voters. Is that the wrong way to do it? Because that's sort of what we're thinking we're, we're trying to do here, too. You know, one side says, well, let's just come back with a little bit smaller design for the, art, for the one lime rock street and take that back to the voters, too, and, and show them how great it is and how wonderful and how it meets all the needs and how they really should pass it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if we don't go that way, then we've got to mm -hmm. present for both sides, or for both locations. Let me say something about selecting okay. the site for the library. Selecting the site for the library is not an objective process in this situation. Agreed. It's an emotional process. Okay. 
And that makes setting down criteria very difficult because we can set down all the criteria and we can say, this site is superior because of reasons A, B, C, D, and E. Yeah. And the voter out there is going to say, I don't care. I like this one better. I understand, but what I, want to, I just want to ask for a clarification of what you just said. There, do you agree that there is a difference between listing those criteria and prioritizing those criteria? Yeah, there, obviously there is, but... So we still haven't listed them, I don't think. We did once and it failed. We did for the steering committee. This, this criteria were listed. Which doesn't mean we shouldn't and, and do we it should, again. We shouldn't have that report. I, we, I we can, we can do, could and should do that, that again. Um, I guess the question is, because each individual, and I said this earlier, each individual has their own set of criteria and their own priorities I, for I get, it. I get that, but I cannot understand how this board could have closed the conversation about location mm -hmm. without having clearly enunciated our criteria for if, deciding if location. If I remember correctly, we went down the line and each individual board member stated their opinion. I, I do believe I remember I did that when we voted on the one Lime Rock site. So it was not something that we wrote down, but I believe if you go through public record, we individually laid out, I said the reasons why I'm voting in favor of one Lime Rock. And I laid, laid it out pretty systematically, and it looked very similar to what I said at the meeting just the other day, where I said why I was leaning towards the one Lime Rock site. So, no, we have not written something down that gets posted and everyone can look that it's a consensus of the board <clears throat> as to the, these different factors. But if I remember correctly, when we voted on the one Lime Rock, everyone went down the line and stated why they're going to vote the way that they voted, and then we voted. Now... Let's go back to our original. And that was not a unanimous year. vote, I might add. Right, that's right. But was that was that a correct assumption? We all went down and, and stated why we were going to vote the way we were about to vote. I believe that that's yeah, that how it was. It was like last October, yeah. a year ago October. Yeah, let's, let's go back. Is We've gotten way off our, our subject here. <laughs> I think we've moved beyond the idea of having a survey, that we're now down to as – you point out, we're taking that responsibility, we're going to make a decision, and then we're going to go forward. Or are we still looking at a survey? Because you know, we're wasting Emily's time if we're not going to go in that direction. We've been at this for an hour now. Can I say something again about the school, middle school project? Because I'm actually on that committee, too. Oh. Uh, and I've listened... What the middle school situation is was quite different, I think, from the library. The, it voted, they, we went out and we did a talk to a lot of people. We didn't do a survey, but we went and talked to a lot of people. And Maria, the superintendent, went and talked to all kinds of groups you guys were talked to. It was very clear why that no vote happened. There was no doubt about it because people didn't understand that the school was a failing building. It was not made clear that the thing is falling down, that there's a serious, I mean, there's a big crack where you can see outside. Um, and then we created a matrix, and Jeff brought this up, of here's what it would cost to fix it, here's what it would cost to renovate it, here's what it would cost to build a new school. And it was very carefully researched and laid out in a matrix. And we went again to folks and said, how would you rather spend your money? Do you want to spend 16 million to patch up an old building? Or do you want to spend 23 million to build a new building? And it was kind of a no brainer at that point. <coughs> so it's a different situation than what we have here because there were not, for the school, there were not I never want a new school, or I want a new school. There were not opposing factions. There was a misunderstanding. There was a lack of information. And that's we're, the, the committee's working on that to resolve it. So I don't think that that's a comparable situation. Look what happened with the Vogue School. Boom. Voted $25 million. Done. <clears throat> Can I ask uh, your statement? You said there are very clear reasons why a no vote happened for the school. Yep. Can we get that answer for the library, do you think? No, because there are yeah. 
dug in <coughs> factions. Okay. Okay. And the only way you're going to get a clear. You're really having problems Thanks. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you're, you, you, it's not going to happen with a survey because we've already been told they're not going to believe it. And that takes it off the table for me. Well, that's that's how I feel. I mean, if, if it's not if it's not going to give us what we need, I, I, I think we have to figure out some way to get what yeah. we need. And, and Owen, just, Owen is going to need to leave in just the next couple Brendan. minutes. Brendan. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, I'm looking yes, at Owen. Yes, I'm he thinking does. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he does. Too look exactly he needs more coffee. coffee. <laughs> oh yeah. Just a quick casual observation. Yeah. And I had said this uh, in the beginning, and I, I respect your opinion. Um, one of the things that I had said to that middle school visioning committee, and I think that it is somewhat applicable here with the library as well, which is, for me, I had the information. I was fully informed. I went to a ton of the meetings about the middle school and why it was falling apart and where it was failing, and they attached it to a number that was too high for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that also is, is, does apply here to the library. Yes. There are things that people liked. They loved the site. The design is okay. I don't want to pay $2 million for that. And that's kind of where it ended with not all people, but with some people. So, I, you know, that, that, that demographic, I think, should not be overlooked. And that's, with a lot of I guess people, that's it was my simply whole, a I cost. Mean, in proposing a survey in the first place, that's, that's what I wanted to find out is, yeah. you know, how many people. But if, if Emily is telling us we can't find that out, then that. there's no mm -hmm. point in doing it. Well, I mean, we can find it out. We can do a survey and we can get survey results. Just will people recognize Then we will have people say, oh, well, she's biased. Mm -hmm. she, did, she did something to the survey. To make it come out that way, and it gets dumped back into our lap to make a decision to make a decision on the next proposal anyway. So, so then it'll make yeah. us look. We'll we'll be reversing what we did. This is born in part because I'm perfectly happy to be fired from this job and fully expecting <laughs> to be fired from this job. <laughs> I am entirely ready to, in a mercenary-like fashion, sideline the no boats. I am also ready to sit here and say, "All right, guys." How do we build a, the largest possible majority approval at the RES site that we can? Put that over here. All right, how do we build the highest possible majority for the Lime Rock site that we can? And then go to battle with each other about which one to back. Can I say a word, Bill? Yes, you were, you were too late to hit public comment. Would, would you come? What we? Yeah, Sonny, why don't you come on up? Thank you. Yeah, because um, we do have viewers at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was on the board when this all started and was part of a committee that was going to bring the photographic workshop college to do it, and then that fell through, and then we were going to build the library at the RES. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, either site is fine. I, I don't think that that's even on the table anymore. But I do think what is on the table and what is very important for the select board to think about is the, uh, the finances. And the people who come to these meetings are not the people who have little children who want to use the library and want, want it built soon and want it taken care of wherever it is. Uh, they're, they're not coming to these meetings. The people coming to the meetings are retired people on fixed incomes and their taxes go up every year anyway and they want to know how much their taxes are going to go up if <coughs> there's another bond for two million dollars if you can tell people that and um, if you want to go to res and say it's going to be a million dollars less money to build a one floor thing then you probably can sell res i don't think that's even necessary I think you need to tell people what this means. When I left the board, we had retired three bonds. Mm -hmm. So we had less that we were paying for all of a sudden. Now we have the sewer bond back, and um, this bond would be an in addition. I think people need to know what's, what that's going to cost them. I know in, my, in our neighborhood, most people are for a new library, but the one person who's against doesn't want his taxes to go up. So I, I think it would be well for the board to concentrate on that issue, much less on the site issue, which you've already take, had a vote on. And, 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 you know, if you want to reopen the RES, it's fine, but I don't think that's the problem. Thank you, Sonny. I apologize. Uh, I have to go. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, 
Wait, uh, do we want to vote on anything while he's here? It's Thank not you. a meeting. We can't. Well, it's a work. Oh, meeting. good. But, <laughs> but we've heard your, yeah. your statement. What we need to do is we need to go back now and do our homework. And, you know, it's pretty clear that the survey is not going to tell us what we think we were hoping it would do. Well, it'll tell you. It's just it'll a question whether something. people will believe you. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the argument also that if you do a survey, you know, one group, because it's going to be next June, one group could push real hard and get a lot of their followers to vote that way. And does that make it a good vote? Because that's that'll the, bring up that skew again, I can't, too. That's like the trash thing. No. You know, yeah. the people that put in the effort, guess what? You know, success and winning is hard. And if you do the hard work and you put in the effort and you win, oh, yes. good on you. Yes. I don't necessarily buy that argument. But converse. I heard it so much with the trash thing and the people and that come get to go out. You can talk about win. it again tonight. Yeah, right. The people that come out, <clears throat> they win. And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When the people come out and they vote for it, they win. Mm -hmm. Well, and but conversely, if there's a vote in a certain direction, and but there's people who are very noisy in opposition mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. do you have to listen to those noisy people? Absolutely. We have to listen to them, but we don't necessarily have to act. When I mean, we can put a vote. I mean, basically, if we, whether we like it or not, RES is back on the table, whether we, whether we mm. like it or not. I'm not oh, sure. I don't but, know about that. No. It, but if we put a proposal out for a smaller library on the one Lime Rock site, and it goes down, what does that tell us? Well, what that, we, that's what I, that's what I mean by RES back on the table. If that yeah. goes down, then then I think that 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 would that would inform us at that point that you know what yeah. that those people are have to be considered. But if we try to put both on, there's a high likelihood they both will fail. That's right. Absolutely, I, I know. You know. Then you just fix them. The, as I said, the I old think, site and be done. As I said, <laughs> you know, in my remarks the other night, my. Observation of the electric is that 45% want a library on one lime rack, 40% want one at RES, and 15% don't want one at all. And if that's the way people are divided and nobody ever changes, then we will never pass anything. Fine, we'll all so we have to, to convince <laughs> Wait, whatever we do. 40 plus 45, 95? And then you said 45, 15. 40, and 15. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I said do a survey. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely right. I, I just guessed. Yeah, okay. That's, you're absolutely right. That's just my perception. Mm -hmm. But if it's right, if it's not, and if it's off a little bit, but I, I don't think it's, you know, I, 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 th mm -hmm. I think it could be. I, obviously, I, I have no scientific basis except for who comes to these meetings and who speaks. But I think the problem with the town right now is that we may not have the votes for either side unless one proposal or another can convince some people who really want the RES site to say, you know what, this design at one Lamarck is really nice, I like it. They've solved the parking problem, They've done it, and it's going to change their vote. Well, you know, and that's, see, that's where I have a, a, a problem. You know, it's not exactly 45 or 40. Oh, yeah, I know. You I know maybe that, four, well, no, maybe 45% would prefer it at one Lime Rock Street and 40 at the other. But of those... Some of them are voting against it for the cost or the size or the design. But they can say, well, you know, I really think I might really prefer it over there because I think it might look better. Right. But if we come back on, you know, and we could pick either side, either site, and, and say, okay, it's not going to be 9,300 square feet. It's going to be a maximum of 8,000 square feet of total footprint size, whether it's one story or two story, and it's not gonna cost the taxpayers more than 1.5 million or 1.23 or whatever. You know, then we can start shifting. It's the ones, yeah, and there is, a, you know, I agree, there is a group on each side that is dead set against the other location. But those are a majority of each side, are a minority of each side. We think. We, well, <laughs> but how are we going to find? How are we going to prove well, I mean, that we can, thesis without? We can't. Let's we, try. But what we can do is, and I think Owen's comment about how many iterations is it going to take? How many different proposals are we going to have to put out there before we have success? And you know, if we have another proposal for the one Lime Rock Street, and we have a smaller building, like many people are advocating, with a lower cost, mm -hmm. and it goes down, where do we go from there? 
And I think that the people, and this is what Brendan yeah, said the other night. Yeah, that would be way night. confusing for me. This is uh, what Brendan mm-hmm. said the other night is one of the reasons he thinks this might have failed is that we didn't let people know what happens if it does fail. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what are the alternatives? We haven't let people know that. And, and yeah, say that, and then, yeah, now we're going to consider the RES. I mean, I think, so, so, so that's what I mean by saying, not necessarily that this board will reverse and, and say, okay, let's go with the RES site, but it, it's on, whether we like it or not, it's on the table in people's minds and the voters' minds. Um, I'm okay, you know, if, if we want to dispense with the survey and if we want to make a decision going ahead, I'm okay with doing that. I think we're going to have to tread very carefully about doing it uh, because people will feel disenfranchised and, you know, and we'll have to be able to justify, say, okay, why did we, what pushed us, like Brendan said, what pushed us to make this proposal? Why did we make it? Well, and there's a parallel here. God forbid I should talk about national <coughs> politics. <laughs> but we have an election system in this country, whether you believe in it or not. No. And the election system happened, and a certain result happened. And you can be unhappy about the result or happy about the result, but at least most people say, okay, this is how we do it here in America. And I think what Brendan is saying is you need to create a system that people can believe in. That we can say, you can put in front of the voters a choice, but you have to accompany that by saying, we're gonna give you this choice. But whatever the choice is, whether it's by one vote or not, that's what we're going to do. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that people can at least have confidence in the process, even if they hate the results. And I think if, and unless you make that statement, and I think this is what Brendan is saying, we then you're going to, this is just going to keep coming up and up and up again because the people, if, you, if Lime Rock wins and you haven't made it clear why, then this gang... This Ames is going to come back and say, but. Well, the, the other wild card in this is the two members of this board are up for election in June. <laughs> um, which yeah. the people could then make the a wrong, change there. If we put the wrong choice before them, yeah. then they, they can uh, take their vote and say, you didn't do what we wanted. Yeah. Yep. Sign an R. And that's the right of the voter. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. so, okay. I, so I think we've agreed. That we're, I mean, if you wanted to do something, let me just confuse the issue slightly. <laughs> right, right before we leave. Well, just, if what you really want to know is how many people want which site, mm-hmm. we can put up a survey monkey in five minutes. We can send out a press release and tell people to go on this link and vote for your choice of site. Mm-hmm. And is there who a, knows? Is there a way to make sure that one person gets one vote on that? Survey Monkey is designed in such a fashion that it only one I, each IP address can only have one. <coughs> don't know whether the voters are from Rockport or not. Correct. So, so that, <laughs> yeah, that, that could be game. You know, you call up all your relatives in Kentucky and say, "Hey, yeah. go on Survey Monkey and vote for this." Well, <laughs> so. there was a lot of concern at the meeting about you know people double counting. Yeah, and it's, uh, which is I've never seen that happen, but well, you know, but. And then it would also be the people who don't have a computer at home and well, go to the maybe, library and uh, use that. And or I mean, we're, we're people s- that share a computer. Yeah. I'm just... We're, we're starting this listening tour thing yeah. coming up here. And maybe we should talk to Emily a little bit about what the questions that she can help us with, questions that could be asked there to get what we want out of that. If we're not going to do a survey, I, I don't know. i just throw that out there. If Emily is willing, I don't know whether mm-hmm. she'd be willing well, or Well, my only concern <laughs> with that is that when you do these listening tours, you get the same people over and, and over and over. That's my concern as well. That was, that was I, I, and I really wanted to try to sample a larger mm-hmm. portion of the population and, and mm-hmm. to get opinions from other than those other than I mean I love the passion of the people who come here and they they inform us very well they're all very well spoken they hold their opinions for for a very mm-hmm. altruistic and, and perfectly you know reasons that are fine but uh, you know I'd like to hear from more people okay all right oh, I'm Rick looking. do you have anything to say you haven't said anything the whole time He's taking a nap. No, no, it's hard to it's hard to jump in. I texted Bill a couple times. Yep. They were very simple. They were very simple. Mutant. We're drinking coconut rum the whole time. <laughs> it's a little early for that. It's 
too early in Florida to go on to the beach. Actually, the sun is practically just coming up. <laughs> They're so far to the west end of the time zone. <laughs> so I guess... No, it's it's calling me pretty heavily now, but uh, you know you you have a tough a tough choice to make. I, I you know I think that the um, Emily pointed out that the listening tour is is. I mean, I think it's important to do the listening tour, but I think we'll get largely the same people giving us the same information. Yeah. And the challenge is to try and get different people to be engaged that are currently being engaged, and or you know I. I I, I believe, like uh, Brendan, is that many people on both sides of this issue are just looking for the the board to just make a decision. Hmm. And uh, site selection is the is a really critical decision, and it's 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 very complex and very difficult. There's a lot of factors that go into it, and just a simple yes or no vote does not allow the objective. Uh, decision making um, it's it's it becomes purely emotional and is that in the best interest of the community as a whole so mm -hmm. I know you're not going to make a decision now no. <clears throat> if it's a it's a uh, workshop so right mm -hmm. and you're zooming in on my that on on the thing in my seat <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's Rick <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Okay. Well, the, the decisions that we're going to have to start, we're going to have to make in the next couple of days is when we're going to hold that listening tour and where we're going to go, and then we can approach the question. But the reason I say that is because one of the decisions I think we made is that we're going to send out a postcard to everybody listing the dates mm. so that everybody knows about it. You know, you can't use, you know, the excuse, well, I didn't see it in the paper or I didn't see it up online or I didn't, you know, see it over at the library on the bulletin board. Yeah. You Jeez, know. if we got our act together, we could we could have it say, like, Happy New Year's or something when we mail it out so people will think it's a nice, nice it would be so nice from the town. Okay. Well, it'd be nice, uh, it would be nice to get a good turnout and to get some different people and to hear from mm -hmm. different yeah. people. Hey, Rick? Rick? Yes. You still there? Good. Yes. Um, can I work with Jamie on trying to set locations for the listening tour? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Because I want somebody from the town office to sort of going out and finding those, those people and getting the agreement so they know it's really official instead mm -hmm. of just me wandering around rapping on somebody's door. <laughs> What's official. that weirdo doing? Right. Okay. Yeah, I think we have some locations. One of the locations we used last time we couldn't use, do in the winter time. That's right. That's the uh, uh, community center down in uh, Rockville. Oh, the chapel. The yeah. chapel. Yeah. yeah, that's close. Right, the to chapel. Me. Yeah. Right. Because they don't have heat. Mm -hmm. But most of the other sites, uh, most of the other sites work very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Good parking and everything like that. Um, yeah. I think we used the. What was it, the Episcopal or the Presbyterian? I forget which one it was down there. We used the church for one of the yeah, library stops. So, exactly, and we use the church in West Rockport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Um, the West Baptist over by yeah over by Richard Remsen. Mm -hmm. And yep. we use the Masonic Hall that worked well. Yeah, but what I think on that one, what we want to do is we want to use the uh, Simon and Corner Center yeah. and be there on that first okay. Wednesday if they really do hold their, you know, um, they were going to yep. hot up. it up, but I told them they, they were they oh. were tentatively thinking about closing it up for the winter, mm. but it's it's not more than a day's worth of intermittent work to get it up and ready for a day for an evening dinner. So okay. it's not a big deal. Okay. All right, I'm out of here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank all right, you, thank Emily. you all at home. <laughs> thank you, Juniper. <laughs> Thanks. Yep.